On behalf of Mason Point and myself, we want to welcome you all to our All Saints Day. This is a day that we spend in commemoration and honor and remembrance of our family members, our friends, our neighbors who have gone before us. They're home already. They beat us. And so we celebrate that. We celebrate the fact that they're home, that they died in the faith, and that most of all, it's not goodbye. It's see you later. So we're grateful for that. Um, there are refreshments afterwards, so please help yourself. Hopefully you brought a baggie, because there's probably a lot. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. Before we go, before we go, let's kind of take a look around and, and just greet our, our brothers and sisters in the faith. Just say hello. peace in mind, we begin this part of our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's go to the Father in prayer. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Henceforth, blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Let us remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us, with the sign of faith, for they were redeemed by God. He gave them a new life through his Son in holy baptism. He nourished them in the company of his people at his holy table. In his mercy and wisdom, he summoned them to his near presence, so that they may rest in his blissful peace forever. Amen. We sing our first hymn, number 507, Holy, Holy, Holy.
say the word baptism, I invite you to say your person's name out loud. Say as many as you have. Say them out loud. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. In holy baptism, Joe, Joanne, Pat. Jean. Was, was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death. In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in the resurrection like his. Our first text is from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is from Revelation 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Mm -hmm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
They're all filled with awe and praise God. A great prophet has arisen among us. God has visited his people. And this report about him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who does not fall away on account of me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. We join our voices in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, whose dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, rose victoriously over death and the grave, we remember with thanksgiving your faithful people who have trusted in Christ, whose tears are gone, and whose sorrows you have turned to joy. We humbly implore you to strengthen us in the confident hope of the resurrection of the dead and of the life of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
weirdly and so Robert G. Aramando. Beatrice Bazoian. Susan Bender. Anthony Sipaneri. Dennis Clow. Lords Hannah Cody. Sister Caroline DeAngelis. Sister Maxie Holy Spirit to Souza. Thomas Dole. Norbert Dahl. Dale Drake. Dorothy Harrison. Jacqueline Helberg.
Bill Johnson. <laughs> Nancy Keeper. <laughs> Margaret Kohler. Grace Landis. Francis Levin. Daryl McKay. Murph McMahon. Guy Miller. Marilyn Morkner. Frank Murphy. Doris Scarato. Mary Scheffler. Audrey Schreiner. Dale Schneider. Clarita Schwent. Robert Sip. Dorothy Smith. Gladys.
this soul. Herbert Strain Jr. Edward Stryker. Marcella Stutt. Darlene Taylor. James Wilson. gifts. Our memories of our loved ones are such a gift and they bring us they bring us such joy and happiness. 
But sometimes if we let it, if we sit down and we sit with our quietness, the memory strikes a different chord. It reminds us of this great big grandpa-shaped hole in our heart. It reminds us that the house is too damn quiet, that the bed is too big, that the toast is too burnt, and that the TV is just boring. We regret that. that we, these memories pile upon us for the sound of a song, the song we share. If I smell marigolds, all I see is my mom and me digging in the dirt and smelling those nasty flowers. <laughs> we all have them. We all have those triggers that remind us of who we've lost. And not just who, but what we've lost. We've lost our identity. Our identity as a couple. Our identity as friends. Our identity as children of somebody that is amazing. Children of somebody who we loved. And we don't ever lose that, but nobody ever sees you when you're coming down the street and go, oh, there's Ed's grandpa. Nope, we don't. We think, there goes Ed. And that's the beauty, I think. That's the beauty of the persistence of memory that we have, is that when we remember it is God's way of speaking into our lives, and remind us that he blessed us with somebody else, that he blessed us with the presence of that person for the time we had them. Whether it was 64 years of marriage or 63 days of friendship, God blesses us through that and reminds us. And even, even John the Baptist, if you recall when Mary went and met John the Baptist's mother Elizabeth, who was her cousin, and she, they were still pregnant, Mary walked up, and the baby, the fetus, John the Baptist, jumped in her womb for excitement. And now, in our text today, John, who's been in prison for a while, wondering when Jesus, his good old cousin, is going to come and get him out, is wondering. He has doubts. He wonders if Jesus is the Messiah, or are we waiting for someone else? Are you the guy, or should we look for someone else? He wonders. And so he sends his disciples and they ask him, John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? In that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits and are many who were blind. He bestowed sight. In that hour, in that brief time, and it's, it depends on which way you look at it, in that hour it means like immediately within 60 minutes from when the disciples got there. Or does it mean the broad brush stroke of hours. It's difficult for us to understand, to, under, to realize that Jesus, that's what he's been doing. And Jesus' answer is appropriate. It's appropriate for the disciples of John then, and it's appropriate for us now. That we say, Jesus, are you the guy, or is there someone else coming? Should we be on the lookout? And he doesn't promise, he says, I'll get around to it, or it's going to be okay. Nope. He says, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. Jesus is a man of action, and he tells his disciples, to, the, John's disciples, to go back and tell John that he has been actioning. He has been busy. doesn't do John a lot of good because he's still in prison. His last words are, and blessed is he who does not fall away on account of me. Blessed are you, John. That's, that's, a, that's a greeting from Jesus to John that says, don't worry. It's all okay. And yes, you're in prison. Yes, your life will be just taken away. Yes, this is true. But don't worry. It's going to be given back to you. And not just this life that you're living now. Not this blip in time that we all share. But the time of eternity. That that is the action that Jesus does. Jesus goes to the cross. And he says, uh, he tells the disciples, I have been looking forward to this day. I have eagerly desired to share this meal with you. And I won't come again. I won't tear it again until I come back. That's the promise. Because he says, I, I eagerly desire to eat this meal. I won't drink it again until the kingdom of heaven comes. 
And that's the promise to you. That's the promise to all of us that the kingdom of heaven is coming, that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, is coming back, not just to visit, but to bring you home, whether it's before the final coming or whether it's in three weeks or whether it was your loved one a year ago or 43 years ago or 59 years ago. But Jesus was there in the room. They weren't alone. That's the... We always think of dying alone and how awful that would be, but they're not. Jesus is there at the foot of the bed, on his knees, praying with that person and for that person. And if you're in that room waiting for your loved one to die, he's there with you and he's got you in his arms and he says, don't worry. It's going to be okay. I will bring him home. And then later, I'll come and get you. So that where I am, you may be and where I am, he already is, because we heard it in Revelation. They all stood before the throne of the Lamb, shouting praises of joy and honor, hosanna and glory and peace and love. It's a good thing that we grieve. It's a good thing that we cry. It's a good thing that we get up and we have really hard days. Because God speaks to those as well. When you're in torment, when you're saddened, I'm with you just the same time as you are, as I am. When you're joyful and you're jumping for joy and you're celebrating and you're singing praises. This little life that we have is a gift to us from the Father. And in that time, we only get, we only have so much time. Is that, is that fair to say? Anybody here planning on live forever? No, I don't want to. But we have this time. And in this time, we are given the gift of speaking as Jesus did, of sharing the good news and telling that the blind that they can see, that the lame that will help them walk, the people who have, have leprosy will help them be cleansed. The deaf are hearing. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the good news preached to them. That's what we get to do. That's why we're here. And we do it with our loved ones, we do it with our friends, we do it with our communities, we do it with our congregations. We are about God's business. That's what we do. Because Jesus went and took care of God's business. Jesus said, because of my death, you will live. You will live to see me again. So we trust, we lean into that promise and we trust that it is true. That this is not goodbye. This is a seal of a while. And that is the memory we keep. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, Remember your children who gather this day to receive your grace and steadfast love, by which we are made rich in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Father, you have set apart a people for yourself and washed them in the blood of the Lamb to be your own. Restore us daily through repentance and forgiveness, and renew our hearts and spirits in holiness, righteousness, and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, Bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations and the communities committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we know your deep love for us. You have called us your children. Deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen fathers and mothers in their vocations, that they may raise their children in the way that they should be brought up. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of compassion, be near to the sick, the aged and infirm, the dying, the grieving, the blind, the lame, the deaf, those who are poor in spirit, and especially those we name now in our heart. Lord, remind them and us, O oh Lord, 
that you call us blessed. Grant healing according to your will and comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection. For your kingdom of heaven is ours. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our, our Lord, your, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear us as we pray in his name, as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Now, may the God who remembers every hair in your head, the God who created you and said, it is good, the God who has blessed you with family and friends, near and far, guide you, watch you, guard you, bless you, and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I can only imagine 
couldn't have known it was going to be that good. I would have followed you. We have announcements, as always. There's always announcements. First of all, I'd like to thank, thank Sister Pauline and Wade and Julia for their reading of our names of our loved ones. Thank you so much. Thanks to Corinne, where'd she go? For serving here until I got here. <laughs> Not that she stopped, but serving you guys in that interim. <laughs> Thank you, Hazel, for playing the organ for us today and all the other times that you joyfully stepped in. I give thanks to Lisa Hamby in the home office who sent out the invitations. A special thanks, where's she at? There she is, to AJ, who without her, this would have been a lot shorter. <laughs> but she is the one that got me the pictures and got me the names and all that stuff. So thank you for AJ. Thank you to Jerry and Maria for singing and playing. Oh, Maria, I think, has some pictures and artifacts of your loved ones, I think, did you bring? Um, if anybody um, had a loved one from A1, I have hand pictures that I can get to you. We thank Madison and her team for the refreshments. If I didn't tell you, there's refreshments back in the back corner for that. We thank you, thank, we give thanks for the care team in every neighborhood who put in the long hours, who do dutifully care for our residents. We are so grateful for them, they, they, that they take such good care of your family. And finally, we thank you for letting us take care of your family. You give us a reason to get up, and you remind us, remind us that there's always more. There's more that we get. There's more that God gives us. He piles it on in abundance through your family, through their jokes, through their crankiness, through the smiles and the tears, and all the above. Thank you for sharing them with us. We are so grateful. The peace of the Lord be yours for such a time as this. Go and be good humans. God's blessings. Thank you.